Hello once again, and welcome to Airship Pirates World. On this rather blustery day, we're going to be talking about using the plugins and mechanics of the Airship Pirates world. Basically, how to get around and operate within the world and perform the various tasks that you can do once you've acquired your wealth and power. So, okay, so this is Area on the Isle. The first thing I want to talk about is docking and how to use the various docking systems. So most cities have both private docks and public docks. Public docks often have these spirally tower looking things on them. The idea being that you can park an airship, any style of airship, on any of the various uh, platforms coming off of the tower. Then you also have the private docks and uh, we'll get there in a second. But first, I'm just gonna pull this uh, ship into the dock there. So I'm gonna pilot it. And let's see, I'm going to try and land it right there. So I'm going to turn my ship, cruise forward. And I'm going to watch on my mini map until my nose is right above the platform. That should do it. Then I'm going to turn. Now on this particular design, I've got chests. Uh, on my back. Uh, by the way, if you want to know how to make a line of chests like these, it's chest, trapped chest, chest, trapped chest, and so on. And they can all be locked by a single sign, which is rather convenient. Alright, uh, and then I'm gonna send her down a little bit until we are level with that second platform, which is right Coming up, almost there. Oh, okay, hit something. So now that I've got it close, I'm going to get the last little bit with my maneuvering thrusters, AKA the stick. Okay, we'll go forward a little bit. Okay, that should do it. Now, let me just show you something. So what I did there, uh, you may not have noticed, but I was holding down shift and then I put myself off the edge of my ship, but because I'm holding down shift, I won't actually fall off. And I put myself off the edge of the ship, and I see that you have left your craft. You may return to your craft by blah, 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 blah. The w reason I do that is I'm looking for a message which says, there are blocks that may merge with your craft. Please you know, reposition your craft. I forget exactly what it says, but it will give you a warning if you're in a position where something might merge with your craft. Every day on the public server, or the survival server rather, I probably get five or six people who have merged their ship with something else. And I understand accidents happen, I've done it myself, but still, if you want to avoid that and you want to uh, avoid annoying your local admin, just put your foot off the edge of the craft just to check and make sure that it's a good docking spot. But this is a good docking spot. so. I'm gonna take a final look at my ship. I'm gonna make sure that it's locked. Now there's a few mechanisms that are gonna prevent someone from stealing my ship. First off, the ship lock back here. So I'm gonna flip this. Now this ship is no longer pilotable. pilotable. Then, of course, I'm gonna have this trap door shut so that no one can get in, because this trap door, as you can see right here, has been privated to my name. Finally, and this is a new mechanism, there's a pilot sign. So if this pilot sign is active, no one can pilot this craft unless their name is on the pilot sign. And you could have up to three names on there. So that's kind of a, a, a last line of defense, but you still want to make sure you shut your doors and you use your lock because someone could walk in here, they could fiddle with the switches and they could do various things to screw around with your ship. And so it's best to just leave the thing locked. Anyway, on with the show. So let's go out here. Oh, okay, yes, all right, an important note. Uh, so it just gave me that warning. There are blocks that may merge with your craft. Okay, now if I were to go to those coordinates, I would find that the coordinates it's referring to is the ship lock. It's that piston head. And don't worry about it. So basically, after you engage the ship lock, you're going to get a message saying that uh, a block is gonna merge with your craft. And you, are, you can safely ignore that message, but always check first. Okay, 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 so. Uh, I have docked my ship. Normally, I would be grabbing cargo out of... Oh, I think the rain is lifting. Yeah, sun's coming out. Ah, uh, it's a beautiful day here in Aerie. Okay, 
so normally, like I say, I'd be offloading cargo from those chests, and I'd be taking them back to the uh, uh, supply guy. Uh, but uh, I've already shown you how cargo works, so we're not going to go over that in this video. What I will show you is docks. So I had to dock at the public dock, which is way over there. And if I was running cargo, I would have to run my cargo all the way to this guy. And be running back and forth and back and forth. It would be a major pain. Well, I don't want to do that. So instead, I want to rent this dock. Right here, it says, Airy Dock 2 can be rented for $5,000 per one day. Which is actually kind of expensive as far as docks go. Most of them are only 1000 But this is Airy on the aisle. Everything is expensive here. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I want to rent that dock, right? So there's two ways I can do it. First off, there should be a dock rental sign up here. Let's see if I can find it. I believe it's right up these stairs. And let's see if I was right. Ah! <laughs> Brilliant! Good job, Baka. Uh, okay, let me try that again. Okay. So yeah, there it is. For rent, Airy Dock 2, one day, $5,000. If I simply right click the sign, boom, I have rented it. Uh, and it's going to stay rented. I've rented it for one day. If I right click again, now I've got two days, three days, four days, five days, whatever. And obviously I'm running through my money pretty fast as I do that. So that's simple, right? You can simply rent the space. Now I can dock my ship there. And importantly, I can place blocks within that area. So normally you can't place blocks other than sand and gravel and dirt inside protected airspace. But if you rent a dock, then you can. Uh, which means you can work on your ship, add signs, whatever you have to do. All right, now, sometimes these signs are missing. Uh, something that's very common is that someone will park an airship in a bad way, uh, and they will carry off the sign with the airship, which is kind of annoying, but it happens. But not to worry, you can, in fact, rent a uh, dock even if the sign is missing. So all you have to do is you go to the uh, the spot you want to rent. Now let's say I want to rent this one. And it says, Airy Dock 3 can be rented for $5,000 a day. And I look around and there's no sign. I'm like, oh crap. Uh, oh well, I guess I will have to rent it using... Well, let's see if I get this right on the first try. If I, if I don't, I apologize. But I think it is AS Rent Airy Dock 3. And I get that name right from here, right? Airy Dock 3. Yes, I got it. Okay. And then I can just do that a couple times, get a couple days on that. So that is how you can rent an area even if uh, it is not, even if there is no sign for it. All right. Now, the other thing I want to show you is how to purchase. So you can also purchase land, uh, specifically houses. The sun's going down. Good thing I'm in a city where there won't be any monsters around. So, uh, Airy on the Isle, it's, in my opinion, it's it's probably the second best looking city there is, the best being Varus. Varus is a very beautiful city. Like, you have this palace over there, and it's just gorgeous. Uh, some of the guys on the server actually built it. Um, and there's also a cathedral over there, which is also just beautiful. Um, I would encourage you to go take a look at those uh, on your own server, but we're not going to do it in this video because it would take forever. So, okay, all right. Um, if, uh, if you have enough money, uh, which I'm going to type slash money, and I'm going to see that I have $1,082,465. So I've been working hard, I've been running a lot of cargo, I finally got a decent amount of money together, now I'm in the market to buy a house, right? Uh, and, let's see, I'm going to, we could look at this one, but, nah, I don't really like this one, it's kind of small, and it doesn't have a good view, so I'm going to go over here, oh, that looks nice. How about that house? Let's buy that house. That's a good looking house. All right, how much is this one? Let's uh, find the sign. Okay, this this house is a half a million. But you know what? I'm gonna get it because I deserve it or something. All right, so I'm gonna buy this house and now it says, purchase by Bakayaro. Now, unlike the docks, this is never going to expire. This is mine forever or until I sell it. You can actually sell it. Oh, this house has a, this house has some kind of basement. Oh, cool! I didn't even know this was here. Anyway, sorry. Uh, back to the point. Um, I don't know. Wow, this is kind of hard to get out of. Who designed this? No, uh, just kidding. 
Um, right, anyway, so I bought myself a house. Uh, I could uh, put a chest in there, put, put some uh, valuable stuff in there, maybe an ender chest or something. And, uh, of course, the, the reason you buy a house is unlike an airship, I could buy an airship and put all my stuff in that, but then if it gets shot down, I lose everything. But you buy a house and you put your valuables in there. Oh yeah, I'm just realizing, so this house has a view of the docks, I can watch the ships come and go, and I bet it has a view of the, yep, it has a view of the Admiralty building too. This is a nice house. I might have to go buy this on the actual survival server. Anyway, uh, so yes, uh, so that is how you buy a house. Couple more quick things I want to show you in regards to uh, money. Uh, so you saw me type slash money, right? And uh, now I have less. <laughs> you can also type slash baltop. This shows the richest people on the server. Since this server I just barely unpacked from the master, this server has two people on it, and yeah, so I don't have much competition. Um, but that is a way you can s kind of see who are the richest people on the server is with slash baltop. Uh, another thing you can do is slash bounty. So you can place a bounty on someone else. You can also place it on yourself, which is a little odd. Okay, a $10,000 bounty placed on Bakayaro by Bakayaro. <laughs> uh, so bounties are kind of meaningless, honestly. Don't like think of this as an actual serious in-game mechanic. It's just something we threw in for fun. The reason I say it's kind of meaningless is because most likely, the most likely person to claim your bounty is the friend of the person you placed your bounty on. Because what's going to happen is at some point in the future, that person is going to go to the arena with their buddy to have a little fun and blow each other up, and then their buddy's going to kill them and collect the bounty, right? So yeah, bounties aren't a serious thing. Now what we do on the server very frequently is we will have uh, agreements between players. Because killing a, killing a player isn't really all that significant, and that's what gets you that bounty, is when you kill them and then pick up their head. Yeah, uh, you can pick up people's heads, by the way. And you can place them around. It's rather grisly, but you can do it. Uh, anyway, uh, but what matters more is blowing up their airship, because that hurts, you know? You kill me, I don't care. I respawn, I grab another iron sword, I'm good to go. But you sink my airship, and I'm pissed. So that's what, uh, that's what the game is all about, is, is going after airships. But there is no plug-in for that. The bounty plug-in doesn't cover that. And that's why we use uh, agreements between players. Okay, the last thing for me to show you uh, command-wise is this one, slash AR check. Uh, except you do have to spell it correctly. <laughs> check, okay. So, um, as you can see, it says Bakayaro has played for five days, 14 hours, and is a V owner. It's because I started out as an owner. If I had started out as a player, it would have said you are a veteran after you have played for 100 hours. So this is server time. You have actually been logged into the server for 100 hours. After you've logged onto the server for 100 hours, you gain certain privileges. Uh, you can place airship signs. And the reason we restrict that to only veterans is because there's a bunch of rules for building airships. You, the, the, the most obvious ones are, it's possible to make an airship that is completely invulnerable to damage. But that's, you know, it's cheap and it, it makes the game not fun, so we don't allow it. Uh, but to make sure that we can regulate it, we make it so that only veterans can build new ships. And then if you're caught with a ship that is invulnerable, either because it has water in the armor or something like that, there's a few ways you can do it. Um, but anyway, if you do that, then you're in serious trouble. Uh, but we want, we want that to be only people who understand the rules and thus are veterans. Uh, then the other thing you can do is you can claim land in the wilderness. So I bought a house over there for 500 grand, right? Well, anyone can do that. But if you want to start a new community somewhere in the wilderness, you need that veteran status. And let me show you how that works next. Okay, so I've put in my 100 hours, and I've achieved veteran status, and now I want to start my own community. And I'm way out in the Stonecrest Badlands, which is basically the middle of nowhere. 
So this is miles from the nearest town of any sort. And I've decided this is where I want to build my community. So I'm probably going to have to have me and a bunch of players if I want to have a decent sized community uh, since um, you can only claim, you can claim a 32 by 32 area and you can claim three such areas. So that's a decent size, but in order to have a really big town, you're going to need a couple of players working together, which is as it should be. Okay, so let me show you how this works. So I've landed here. I want to make it on this cliff thing, and I'm going to start from this block. So I'm just placing that kind of as a marker, and I'm going to have it go mostly eastwards, but also north and south. Let me show you how that works. So first off, you need to get the wand which is used to make a world edit selection. So I will type slash slash wand, wand. There we go. All right, and then you simply left click and right click to create a very small selection. Now I will expand that selection east slash slash expand 31 blocks. So 31 plus the one I've already selected is obviously 32 to the east region expanded 31 blocks. And then I will also expand to the south. See how that works? So if I look at my mini map, I'm going east and south. That's going to be one of my regions. Then I will t do slash WG claim. And then you have to type in a name for it. I'm going to type cliff dwellers one. Whoops. I apologize. That should have been slash W or RG region claim cliff dwellers one. Okay, new region has been claimed called Cliff, Cliff Dwellers 1. It does uh, charge you a small amount, $10,000, which of course is nothing after you've played for a few days. All right, that's one of my regions. Now I'm going to add another one. So I will start the process over again. Left, right. Expand 31 east again, but this time I will expand 31 north. Okay, actually, I apologize, I already screwed up. <laughs> so, I actually need to make the next region, I can't start it here or the two regions would overlap and it would give me an error. Because you cannot claim an area that was previously claimed by someone else, including yourself. So, let's try that again from here. Okay, expand 31 east, expand 31 north. That should work. Okay, slash region, claim, cliff, Dwellers 2. Alright, I have now claimed two regions, but I haven't really done much yet. So far, all that has done is no one else can build in this area but me. But monsters could still spawn there, explosions could still happen there, all sorts of bad stuff could happen here. So, I need to set a bunch of flags. I will do that by typing slash RG space flag space the name of my first uh, region, Cliff Dwellers 1, and I'm going to start with PvP. PvP deny. Okay? So now a player couldn't come in here and kill me, and I will set the same thing on Cliff Dwellers 2. Of course, I also could not kill that. Okay, and then next we're going to do TNT deny. Okay? So now you couldn't drop bombs on this area and blow it to oblivion. Now I will do Cliff Dwellers 2. Okay, those are both set. Now I will do Fire Spread Deny. Uh, and that also denies uh, the penetration effect on uh, fire guns, by the way. Same thing for Cliff Dwellers 2. Okay. Now next, we are going to do Mob Spawning Deny. Mob Dash Spawn. Whoops, not F Mob. Mob dash spawning deny. And the same for Cliff Dwellers 2. Okay, finally, actually, no, this, yeah, there's a few more. Okay, uh, next we will do other explosion. Other explosion, what I, uh, what I care about is that includes torpedoes. So this, oh, what did I do? Other, other explosion. Deny, not plural. Anyway, so yeah, so that means torpedoes will not work in that area. They can still move, but they don't explode. Cliff Dwellers 2, other explosion, deny. 
Okay, next, let's set up a greeting. So we're going to have just a little greeting in here. Greeting space. Welcome to the cliff dwellers. All right, then we're going to have a farewell. You, let's see, do you are leaving the cliff dwellers. Okay, done. Now, one thing to note. Um, oh, <laughs> look at that. Region flag farewell set on cliff dwellers one to you. I don't know why it does that, but if you do it again, it works. It's very strange. And I don't think I set that on number two, so I will go ahead and do that. Okay, and I don't think I set the greeting on number two either. So we will set that. All right. Now, uh, let me just uh, show you that that is indeed working. So if I, hopefully without falling off the cliff, just move out and then move back in. Welcome. Oh, it screwed it up. And uh, now I bet it worked. Yeah, welcome to the cliff, cliff dwellers. Now, okay, so I have this now wide area, including my airship there, which is now my own private area. Uh, now, one thing to note, if I move from Cliff Dwellers 2 to Cliff Dwellers 1, yeah, I get the greetings and farewells. And you can still see, I still have, somehow, the greeting and farewell is still screwed up. I don't care! You see how it works. All right. Now, the last thing to show you is I'm going to share this community with a bunch of other people. So I'm going to do slash. Okay, sorry about that. Had to actually look up the command. Anyway, uh, so then you type rg space or slash rg space add member Bob or whoever it would be. Uh, with. Uh, <laughs> I looked it up and still got it wrong. Ah, the skill. Anyway, so uh, slash add member and then the name, Cliff Dwell Dwellers One. There, there we go. Cliff Dwellers One and Cliff Dwellers Two. Now Bob is also a member of this uh, uh, region. So there you have it. Uh, and now I could build buildings here and they would be protected. Um, and uh, monsters can't spawn here. Although, monsters could still wander in here, so you're not completely safe. You're gonna wanna set up some kind of like fence or something to keep them out, uh, put down a lot of lights, something like that. Uh, but that's, that's about it. So that shows you how to use all of the additional features of the server. And I can watch this beautiful sunset from my new home over the grand mesas of the Stonecrest Badlands. Anyway, uh, so uh, I'll see you next time.